Bevel carving is essentially the opposite to V-bit carving and leaves the angle standing proud. The toolpath is located next to the V-bit carving under 2D toolpaths. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up the material and then I can work out the height that I want the bevel to be. The material is 10 millimeters thick, so I need to enter that as the finished depth. And I'm going to enter a wall height of let's say five millimeters, which is also going to give me a bevel five millimeters high. Select a carving tool. Obviously, this needs to be a V-bit in order to get the angle. Next, select centerline if you would like to know the maximum height and the width. You must also select a profiling tool, which will machine around the vector that you have selected. I'd suggest using a tool that will get into the corners as the bevel will not look very good with large radius corners. Finally, select Calculate Now. For simulating, I'm going to expand the bevel carving toolpath and simulate the V-bit and end mill individually so you can see what happens. The bevel carving looks like it is just creating a V-bit offset either side of the vector, but when the end mill is simulated, you can see that it has created a bevel. This can be seen well if I remove the waste material. When using the bevel carving tool, you may want to create a larger boundary, in this case a box outside the zero plane, which can be selected along with the profile and create an area clearance, which will remove all of the material to leave the bevel standing proud. Here you can see I have done it to the same depth and added a 12 mm end mill and a six mm end mill. If I calculate this and then simulate the area clearance first, then the bevel, you can see this is how you leave the bevel standing proud and have the rest of the material removed.